And you also asked about exactly how we, we bolus it and so forth. I, I personally, I, I know that it's described as you can do like 50 milligrams and then you can do the rest over an hour. I, yeah, I, I personally believe in the slam it in and figure it out later method. There is no evidence behind this, but I just don't see why you would give a little bit of dose in someone that's not actually moving their, their heart at all. Um, but very few of these people end up having hemorrhagic complications actually from from peri-rest, because one, they have to get ROSC before they can have that happen, so. But I think that slamming it in, the, the problem with that is the half-life is so short. You, you slam it in and you really only get effect for a few minutes. Whereas if, you know, if you're giving a bolus and then an infusion, if you've got a large clot load, you have a duration of effect. Whereas if you just give a bolus, you're, you're giving maybe 10, 15 minutes of effect. And that's exactly what I want, because once I get ROSC, they go straight to the cath lab. So if they had an LAD occlusion... You want it ongoing during that time frame as well. I mean, why would you have the cath lab? Well, I mean, it depends on how long you're running your codes, I guess. Yeah. No, but I mean, when you, when you get <coughs> ROSC, you're going to get them on the cath lab, but what's the downside of having an infusion going? I, I mean, I, I would... I, I see where you're coming from. Uh, there's nothing wrong with infusion, but you gave less up front. And part of, part of my worry is that if you don't give as much quickly, then you have less drug acting on the place that needs to act in order to get to ROSC. I mean, this is not evidence-based, but it's intuitive that if you got a massive clot and got an arrested patient, that you want to get to a therapeutic level as quickly as humanly possible. So in my mind, loading doses are not the way to go. Um, just in my mind. I have no evidence to back that up. The argument, I think, your, your effective dose of TPA is actually much less than what we think. Mm -hmm. And what, because it's such a short-acting drug, the infusion is that you actually get that loading dose and effective dose with a much lower dose than we think. And giving that big bolus probably is doing nothing other than shortening the effect. Mm -hmm. Because it's an incredibly effective drug when you give it. And again, this is just my opinion as well. But when you give it at you know, a small loading dose and then start an infusion, my rationale is you're giving the, the drug, you're getting an effective dose, and you're expanding that, that window of effect rather than, I don't think you're getting, you know, in my brain, I don't think you're getting a bigger effect by giving, you know, pushing 100 rather than 50. Sure. Yeah, Gossage has probably done more work on this campus and regarding PE uh, than anyone else. I mean, he, he recommends uh, giving 100 milligrams as, as kind of a bowl, I suppose. A lot of the newer yeah. protocols are, are using significantly smaller doses, but that's in, you know, some massive PE or something like that. Oh, sure. There's not, there's not, there's not, there's there's not. So that, that's my main reason, because I see where Richard is coming from. But if you're not actually going to do that, you're only going to get five, 5 to 15 minutes of effect, whereas if you give a bolus, I think you probably get as effective as an initial bolus. <coughs> And if you give the infusion, but you're talking about giving how long are you talking about giving ten percent bolus, or you're talking about giving fifty and starting an yeah. infusion? I think it probably doesn't matter, but I don't think because you know, like the initial bolus, I would probably give fifty because it seems kids. like more. So I don't. Think. So if you had a young patient that coded and you're going to give them TPA as a witness arrest, like Dan was talking about, how long are you running your code for after you give your bolus of fifty? Thirty minutes. Yeah, Thirty minutes, I think, is what the expert. Well, what if they what if they come in at twenty at fifteen for ten? Well, that's the when you give the TPA. You know it's a witness or you give it when they hit the door. Like, <coughs> I didn't make that decision. It's unlikely that someone that doesn't get ROSC after getting a bolus up front is going to get a ROSC twenty minutes later because of your continuous infusion. Like if they're going to get back, they're going to get back quick. So, in my opinion. But even with a half life of eight minutes, fine. But the brain is still not being perfused. I mean, you got to argue. That about you gotta wonder about the good that you're doing. No, I, I, I mean, because even with a half life of eight minutes, though, if you're running it for thirty minutes and you just bolus it up front, you've only done three half lives. No, okay. They do bolus infusion. Uh, but, but that's what I'm saying. If so, if you give a hundred and then you run it for three more half lives, you still got twelve and a half milligram equivalents in the blood, which is the same thing as the infusion. So I think it's a little bit academic. I would I would advocate against like a tiny bolus of like ten. I think if you want to do 15 in infusion, that's fine. I think that if you want to do 
what I do, just 100, I think that's fine. I don't think there's any evidence. You also have to think about setting the pump up and all that good stuff too, which isn't all, I mean, this is seconds count. I, I like to keep things simple in my codes of like, if there's something that I can slam in, it, you do it. You know, if you read the literature on a lot of things, like I was teaching a student about Sass epilepticus, and it says clearly, oh, when you're giving your lorazepam dose, you should give it slowly over five minutes. And that's not at all what we do. You're like, oh, that person is seizing, and you give it pretty quickly. I'm not saying that you push the plunger in one second, but it's not, you're not going to take five minutes of slowly giving your two milligrams of lorazepam. You just don't do that because they're critically sick. And that's one nurse that's not trying to set up a pump or something, in my opinion. And so when do you make that decision after a round of CPR, you know, to wait to rest, after that last night you're I'm probably asking for it within the first minute or two if they're a young person. Because you can get it to bedside and then to make the decision in a minute, but it takes a little bit of time to set it up. Do you give the same dose for uh, presumed ACS arrest as you would for you know, trombolytic arrest? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I agree, but again, there's no other. So just that, that, coming from the... Part of the world that doesn't do these protocols, this protocol at all. Is it now ACLS protocol to use clot no. busters no. on no. all unwitnessed arrests? No. No. It is not. A certain age, it is not. So what you're talking about here is it seems like it would be of some benefit, but it is not yet a recommendation across the board. Uh, totally. This is absolutely extrapolated. In fact, the few studies that have taken basically all comers and pushed lytics on everybody yeah. showed no benefit. Yeah. So I think you definitely have to select who you're doing.